Great kills. Eat. Shop. Explore, said this mural near the Great Kill Station on the Staten Island Railway. Oh my god, how did they know I was coming? Great Kills is at the top end of Staten Island's south shore and at the bottom end of the east shore. The borders are unofficial and ambiguous. Due east is Great Kills Harbor with a marina, restaurants, and Great Kills Park hooking around. It seemed like a magnificent eat and walk opportunity for this episode of the Staten Island Restaurant Tour. On the way from the Great Kill Station on the Staten Island Railway, I passed the Knights of Columbus headquarters. This is a Catholic fraternal organization that helps the needy both within and outside of their membership. And they have a cool logo. The anchor foreshadows the aquatic motif of this episode, which took me to the marina, cafe, restaurant, and tiki bar. Here's the Great Kills Moravian Church. Moravia is part of the Czech Republic. Another facet of diversity in Great Kills. A French explorer dubbed the area La Grande Kills, using the Dutch word for little stream. My walk down Hillside Terrace took me across a marshy stream, presumably one of the kills, though it looked like a murky skeeter breeder. This attractive home is red, leaning slightly towards salmon. Later, Great Kills became known as Clarendon after a British governor before reverting to a version of its original name. This house is a pale olive green, so we have red and green for the Christmas season. Speaking of colors, Staten Islanders endow blue belts, anteing up to maintain the natural beauty of their neighborhoods. In a previous episode, I encountered one dedicated to a departed family dog. Here is one dedicated to a guy named Wep Dog. The John Lennon quote, all you need is love, just about broke my heart. I was filled with gratitude for having reached my mid-sixties and being able to explore other people's neighborhoods. Rest in peace, Brian. I was glad I saved this episode for another brilliant blue sky day. In only a few minutes, I reached Great Kills Harbor, where a Great Kills Park wraps around with a spit of land that almost touches the neighborhood's waterside restaurant district. You'll see that in a map later. I came for the food, though the signage emphasized the bar. The restaurant must be near here. And here we are. Wherever you go, there you are. Shooting into the sun never produces a good picture. Sorry about that. But I wanted you to see the outdoor dining area. Enclosed by trees, it looked inviting. Outdoor dining areas became popular in the other four boroughs during the COVID pandemic, constructively repurposing curbside space. But here in suburban Staten Island, where there is more space, they are more expansive, roomy, inviting places to hang out with friends and family. The tiki bar is not tiki tacky, but tiki tasteful. The color scheme is dark, soothing, sexy. I wasn't here for a drink, but I can see the attraction of chatting someone up here over a martini. Once again, the sunlight was shining in the wrong direction for an effective panorama of the dining room. But the space was, well, spacious, suffused with cheer-inducing light, and either quite popular on a Tuesday afternoon, or hosting some kind of event, judging from the gift baggies on that center table. The bathroom included a small waiting area, presumably so that you could wait for the single-person men's or ladies' room while checking yourself out in that classy mirror. What else would you be doing here? I took a great selfie in the mirror, but I'm trying to stay undercover for the duration of the tour. The $22 pre-fix menu included soup or salad appetizer and a variety of seafood and Italian entrees. I'm finding that most restaurants in Staten Island are Italian to some degree. Even the seafood joints are diners. Here's the healthy calm before the cholesterol storm. I decided to go for short ribs with what the online menu described as butternut squash risotto. But it was lemon mashed potatoes on the day I was there, with frizzled onions and horseradish creme fraiche. Can we get a little closer for the food porn shot? It took only a little nudge of the fork to separate the tender, juicy flakes of rich, brown, braised beef. The kitchen was busy that day, but it didn't stint on the flavor. 
the modest lunch portion was an unbeatable value and deep down satisfying for someone like me, only rarely a red meat eater. After lunch, I was in a mood for a walk through Great Kills Park, which curls around Great Kills Bay and leads into Kiss the Marina. This might have enabled me to circle around in front of the marina and grab a shot of the restaurant's other side. However, pedestrian approaches to the park from the marina were fenced off. I guess if I lived in the nice houses along Mansion Avenue, I wouldn't want drunken louts traipsing past my little yard along the bay. I hope to try Great Kills Park again from the next neighborhood north on the tour, Bay Terrace. I zigzagged through Bay Terrace en route to its SIR stop. The architecture wasn't as ambitious as I've become accustomed to in the South Shore neighborhoods, but it had its own subtle allure, was blessedly quiet, and in mid-December was full of Christmas cheer, including the largest transparent holiday lights I've ever seen. I wouldn't mind seeing these bad boys showing their colors at night. Maybe after a drink at the Tiki Bar. In lieu of the scenic walk I'd like to have taken, I did get plenty of shots of the marina. Here's the Richmond County Yacht Club, a somehow pleasing brick-colored postmodernist box. A friend tells me this is the only decent harbor for recreational boats on the island. He's been here on OPB, other people's boats. I've never been on a yacht. Hint, hint. Yes, it is just lovely here, among all the pleasure craft. Their noble prows prod the imagination while their slender masts pierce the sky. This one in distinctive beige and aquamarine was especially pleasing to the eye. Someone has a good color sense. Many boats were bundled up for the winter, waiting patiently for the spring. You wouldn't want to venture into the bay with a bitter wind in your face. There must be a signage company or painting contractor that specializes in this particular waving flag mural because it is all over the island. I'm always glad to see it in these troubled times. This is not the obelisk from the Led Zeppelin Presence LP cover. It is not even the same shape. With this last Great Kills Harbor panorama, we bid farewell to Great Kills. In life, you can go one of two ways. I went back to St. George and the ferry home to Manhattan. With the next episode, the tour will enter the East Shore at its southern end, Bay Terrace. If you're enjoying the Staten Island restaurant tour, you can follow the blog version at medium.com. To follow the YouTube version, click follow next to my name at the top. Then click subscribe to get emails on new episodes. See you soon.